to everybody. I'll be right back. Okay. Hello and welcome. I'm going to wait a couple minutes, see if anybody hops in. I'm going to share the stream out. And Hello, Gemma. How are you doing this morning? The best life. How are you doing? It's good to see you. I'm just sharing my video out on my community tab. If y'all could do the same thing, I can appreciate it. Okay, I just shared it out. TH2, hello, how's it going? I don't see where my stream yard is. I'm going to do a cook with me. We're going to do some waffles, some keto waffles this morning. Hello, Gripsaw, how are you doing? Good morning, Steve Essex. Christopher, thanks for coming in. Thank you, Gemma, for sharing. I've got Ghost Prepper here this morning hanging out with us. I'm just going to do a cook with me. And we're going to hang out. I was bored, so I wanted to go live. So me and Ghost is going to be hanging out quite a bit today. If you haven't heard, Ghost has a canning video going. Uh, what, a canning marathon going on today at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're all going to can together, so hopefully we'll see you over there. Also, I go live at 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the Keto Low Carb Bake Off. Should be fun. Should be, yes, absolutely. So, I hope people show up. <laughs> That's the thing about going You never know if anybody's going to show up or not. This is true. So, how are you doing today, Ghost? I'm doing good. Doing good. Are you amped up for Ain't the candy marathon? Yeah, I'm excited about it. A little bit nervous, actually, but excited. I'm going to learn a new way to can. You're going to teach me how to do the no soak method. I've never okay. done that before. I think it's, I don't know. It just cuts a couple steps out. It's a lot easier, I think. Yeah, I watched your video actually twice. And um, like legit, it, it would reduce my uh, my prep time to pretty much zero, just washing the jars and getting everything ready. Yeah, you know, which is awesome. Anything that saves time is awesome. Right. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, and I can see it. I can see how it benefits. You know, uh, especially the softer beans like lima beans and 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 you know some other beans that are a lot softer. You know, uh, not like you know kidney or or pinto beans. Um, because I'm just curious to see how it turns out, to be honest with you. Yeah. I like it. It's pretty simple. I don't eat beans because I am keto and beans aren't keto. But in a scenario where I need food, I will definitely pop a jar of beans and eat them if I have to. <laughs> and yeah. my husband, he loves, you know, 
I guess, uh, what are they called? Northern beans, the soup beans. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so great northern I'll, beans. Yeah, they're all. Yeah. So I'll probably be doing those. Um, and that's the, the, the way I do it. Um, people have questioned whether or not um, they're ready to eat when you open them. And they are. They definitely are. So. Oh, yeah. Just the canning process. It's a, it's a done deal. Yeah. <clears throat> when you pressure can, when you open, you can eat it right then, yeah. right there. there. So what are you making this morning? I am making some keto waffles. And it's a simple recipe. It's just a cup of almond flour, a tablespoon of vanilla, um, a dash of baking powder, and some heavy whipping cream. Super simple, easy. I need to get on here and do um, some biscuits, some keto biscuits. Trust in God was asking for keto biscuits, so I got to teach him how to do that. But on these um, cook with me videos, I try to do quick, simple stuff so people can follow along and cook with me or save yeah. the recipe for later. Right. So I... And I'm lazy. I don't want to stand here in the kitchen for hours on end cooking. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you. The best life. Thanks for coming in. I have 20 minutes, then animals and cutting firewood all day. Fun, fun. I'll be, um, hey, there's trust in God. He must have heard me talking about him. What? <laughs> Yeah, I got a busy day after I get breakfast done and this live done. I'll be cleaning the kitchen and sanitizing it so I can do this uh, marathon and hopefully I'll get it done before my 2 o'clock live. We'll see. What about keto gravy? Is that a thing? Actually, yes. Keto gravy is a thing. The best life. So, I'm going to do some bacon this morning, too. Breakfast isn't bake. Uh, breakfast isn't breakfast without bacon, right? <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. Bacon, bacon rules in the kitchen for sure. <clears throat> Hopefully, this fall. Right now, I'm using store bought bacon, um, but I do have a butcher pig that's growing out. So hopefully, this fall, he'll be ready to be butchered out. And that'll be a task. The last one we butchered out was a 600-pound hog, and it took us two and a half days to butcher out. Wow. But that's, that's because there's only two of us. We don't have a lot of yeah. help. Yeah. That's a big hog. Yeah. We, I don't think we're going to let this one get that big. I think about 250 to 300. Love you yeah. too, Gemma. Gemma's the sweetest. Do you know Gemma, Ghost? No. I just met her just now. You need to check out Gemma when you get a chance. She is a heck of a supporter. She specializes in autism awareness. Uh -huh. And she's from the UK. She has an awesome accent. <laughs> I love, I love accent. the UK. I love the UK. Yeah. I spent three months in Scotland when I was in the army in Edinburgh. Oh, really? I'm in Edinburgh. Some uh, I was in Ireland for a little while. Yeah. The UK is awesome. I love the UK. See, and I've traveled all over the United States, but I've never traveled outside the country. I always wanted to, but then when everything hit, you know, I'm like, eh, I don't ever want to get out of the country now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I loved it over there. I mean, it's, it, man, Scotland it was absolutely gorgeous, especially the Highlands. I mean, it's just, it was amazing. It was amazing. I bet. And the people were just beyond belief. I mean, the people were just so welcoming. It was, it was, it was like a really good experience. Isn't that funny? It seems like people from other countries are like so much nicer. Oh yeah. Yeah. Americans are assholes. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, they are. I was, yeah, we are. <laughs> I mean, like, for real, we are. Arrogant, cocky. I mean, it's crazy. 
So let's see if I can show it here. Can you see it, Ghost? Yep. Oh, yeah. It's a pretty little part. I know. I got this um, waffle maker for a dollar. It was on clearance at Walmart after Valentine's Day. And I'm like, that's super cute. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, it's so cute, but if you put that on a plate and handed it to me, I'll be pissed off because it's only one. That's like yeah. one bite. Well, it's that's like an thing. easy waffle. With this, the thing is, almond flour fills you up so fast, you'd be surprised how less you eat. You get, like, Barrett, he weighs 245, and he can only eat two of them because it fills you up so fast. That's your old man? Yeah. Yeah, because I'm 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 uh two thirty eight the last time I weighed myself. Yeah. Yeah, he's two forty five. Yeah, I can put down some food. And oh. I'm looking at that thing, it's like a waffle McNugget. <laughs> a waffle McNugget. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it looks like. It's like a waffle McNugget. It's like I just want to dip it in some some syrup and just like <laughs> Oh, Gemma says, I find the American accent quite romantic. Oh, aren't you sweet? Yeah, the jerks always stand out the best life. Yeah, they do. But I love Scotland. Scotland was awesome. I mean, it rains a lot. It, like, rains every day. But it's kind of like a mist, you know, it's just like there's this moisture in the air. There are sheep everywhere and they all drink tea like at like 10 and 2. That that this tea time thing was crazy. I had to get yeah. used to that. But like they drive on the wrong side of the road. And they drive on the wrong side of the road. That was like the biggest adjustment. They they drive on the wrong side of the road. But other than that, it was awesome. I would love to visit Scotland. Um, there's a lady actually on YouTube. I can't think of her name right now, but she's all into like the medical herbs. She's a pretty big channel and she teaches people about medical herbs and she's from Scotland. And I just love watching her and listening to her accent. Yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome over there. I mean, the culture is crazy. I mean, and the food, oh, forget about it. The food is insane. Oh. You want to talk about flavors? Oh, it's 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 nuts. I mean, it's nuts. The food is just through the roof. Huh? I don't know much about it, but I would love to go learn, uh, visit and learn. It's funny because a couple years ago, um, I was into like family crests really bad. Have you ever looked up your family crest and all the no. history behind it? No. No. I mean. I I, I mean, I know where I come from, but I've never looked up a family crest or anything. That's pretty cool. You should do that, guys. That might give you an idea for something um, that you've been working on. But anyways, um, I looked into my husband's family crest and his history and everything, and we found out that he was Irish. And his mom always said for years that he was that they were Irish, but she had Alzheimer's. And he's like, no, we're not Irish, da, 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 da. And I'm like, well, what if she's right? And he is like, no, we're not Irish. So I looked into his family history and they were Irish. And his mom had happened to have a book on the shelf and I had grabbed and read it. And it was about Ireland, um, about a family raised in Ireland. And they talked about my husband's name is Barrett. And in the book, they talked about this Barrett pub, this bar. <laughs> And I was like, see, there's the proof. You are Irish. And he's like, get out of here. I am not. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Yeah. Jim says, I don't consider myself to have an accent. You guys have an accent. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Firefly Farm. Welcome. Thanks for coming in. Page two. I love your chicken and bone broth video, ghost. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. I have, um, like, I got lucky on my heritage part because, um, like, I know my heritage. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm Scandinavian, part African, and Native American. That's why my, you know, I mean, you can tell by my complexion. 
I'm a Native American, Scandinavian, African American, and a little bit of English, uh, but uh, or Anglo-Saxon, I, I think is what they call it. But uh, yeah, I'm a mutt. I'm just mixed up. I'm normal. So, I'm, I got a question. What's the difference between Scandinavian and Norwegian? Um, no. Norway is Norway. Scandinavia, I, I'm not... You know, honestly, I don't really know. I mean, I know it's really, really, really cold, and that's where the Vikings come from. Yeah, no. that's what I, when <laughs> my dad did. Said, a lot of people, well, a lot of people say, oh, "Well, that's why you're six two. You weigh two hundred fifty pounds, and you got a a huge beard." I'm like, "Whatever, man. It just it works for me, so it is what it is." Yeah, my dad um, always says it's so funny because when anybody asks him like what his bloodline is and everything he says i'm a viking <laughs> yeah but yeah he, i get my bloodline from him his genes must have been really strong i have a kind of strange mix because my mom was um hispanic from mexico and she is american indian so she is really dark complected with dark hair brown eyes all that and then yeah. all my brothers and sisters have that same complexion. And then here I am with blue eyes, white skin. I burn. I don't even tan. And um, my dad is Norwegian, uh, German, Scottish, and Canadian, uh, French Canadian or something like that, he said. And I'm like, right. what the heck? Why do I have to get your genes? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's, I mean, it's pretty weird how that works, you know, with the whole genes and things, because I've got three siblings, and, you know, it's, it's like every single one of us are different, you know, but it's, it, I mean, it's it's weird, it's strange, it's kind of confusing, but it's, it's really unique, and it's, it's actually really cool. Yeah. Well, it was funny, because they always used to tease me, because when I was little, I had the blonde hair. And I had blue eyes. So they always teased me and said that they found me in a trash can. So I was always like really sad that I didn't fit into my family. Well, then years later, you know, when we grew up, I found out like my brother and sister were like super jealous of my blue eyes and blonde hair. And I'm like, well, why didn't you tell me that when I was little? <laughs> yeah, my eyes, my eyes used to be when I was growing up, when I was little, they were like the crazy like transparent turquoise blue like people accuse me of wearing contact lenses and then the older i got my eyes actually changed now they're they're like literally gray that's the color that's on my driver's license my eyes are gray and if, if my blood pressure goes up or i get angry or, or pissed off my eyes change colors they'll go from like gray to green to blue so I like, I legit have mood rings in my face. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that is. <laughs> it freaks crazy. me out sometimes. I'll go to the back and I'm like, my eyes are a different color. What's going on? I think that's funny too, because mine do the same thing depending on the mood. Like my eyes will turn gray, blue, green, whatever. Um, and I thought that was you always see back weird. On I, oh, hey, Backwoods and Prepping. How you doing? You see Backwoods in the chat. Good morning, everyone. Who's the guy with the funny beard? <laughs> you know, it was so funny. I, like, I don't know. Most people don't know this because I don't tell them. It's kind of strange. But I love beards. I have a thing for beards. I don't know why. But, like, Barrett, he has a beard as well. And he when he shaves, it, like, throws me off. I'm like, I'll walk into the kitchen. It'll scare me half to death. I'm like, what did you do? Don't do that. <laughs> And then Mark over at Rolling Homestead, he shaved his beard the other day. And we yeah, were talking. No, it freaked me out. I'm like, dude, what's going on? Yeah. I'm like, it freaked what me out. You? Shaved his beard. I'm like, what? Yeah. I'm like, you look so different. <laughs> yeah, he does. He looks completely different. I'm like, who hacked your channel, bro? Yeah. Like there's some guy in here with no facial hair and he's pretending to be you. What's going on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Steve says, I'm not sure, sure where I came from. I think I was found in an alley. 
an alley's better than a trash can. They used to tell me they found me in a trash can in the vault. <laughs> That's that American asshole thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Backwoods. I'm surprised uh, you guys are on this early. You and Backwoods, you're like late nighters. I figured you'd be in bed well, sleeping by now. Well, he just woke up. I haven't been to bed yet. So I probably sound delirious. I'm nah, having hard. those days where I just really don't want to sleep. I'll get enough sleep to uh, make sure I can effectively can tonight. That's for sure. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. I think it's going to be a good show. I think a lot of people are going to show up. <laughs> Best life. Like, I'm I'm afraid of my... What was that, guys? <laughs> I was saying I, I'm, I'm excited. I think a lot of people are going to show up. Oh, I hope so. I think it's going to be so fun. Well, I reached out to uh, Angry Tripper, Jason, because everybody's uh -huh. like, you need to reach out to Angry because he's got a canner. He's, he's never used it. So I sent him an email and I'm like, dude, you know, I'm doing a live canning show, you know, on Saturday. I'd love for you, to, you know, pop in there and do it with us. I know you I mean, uh, to can, it, that's like a three hour process. And uh, he actually, you know, responded to my email within just like a few hours. And he's like, man, I would love to do that. But I got to work. I'm on shift at the fire station at the house, but he said he's going to, he's going to do his best to pop in in the chat and, and at least say hello, you know, because he is working, you know, yeah, he can't can awesome. with us, but he's, you know. yeah, yeah, that, that would be awesome. like really that's cool. Bit, I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing about canning, you know, everybody's like, Oh, I'm so scared. I've got a canner, but I don't this, I don't that. Just do it, man. Just do it. I mean, like legit, I mean, this is 2021. If you're gonna blow up your canner, you you honestly have to like do it on purpose. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it like I mean, there's like a one in ten million chance that it's just gonna randomly happen, you know. So right. it's and trust me, I made all the mistakes you can possibly make canning, and I'm still here. Yeah, yeah, I don't understand how people blow up their canner. Like, the canner I use, my mother-in-law had, so it's from, like, the 50s or 60s. I mean, it's an old canner, and I've been using it 10 years, and I've never blown up anything. I don't I don't understand how people blow up their canner. <laughs> yes, I literally fell asleep one night. I was on, I canned, like, I started canning early on a Saturday morning, and I legit... I bought a whole lot of meat and I wanted to can it all. And my canning session turned into like a 36 hour nonstop canning marathon. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> I legitimately fell asleep. I set my alarm on my phone and I didn't hear it. And I fell asleep. And when I woke up, the alarm is going off and I'm hearing my jiggler and I go running into the kitchen, freaking out. And the, the, my, like my timer legit like went off like 45 minutes before I got to the canner, but yeah. there was sufficient water in there that the water was just venting through the jiggler and everything was still fine. You know, thank wow. God there was enough water. Now, if you just like, let it go like wide open and, 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 and pull out all your water here, yeah, there, there, there's probably going to be an issue. But as long as you got fluid in there, I mean, you've got wiggle room. Yeah, I'm, su I'm surprised that the, the water didn't all escape from there. That's pretty cool. Well, I mean, I usually, I, I make sure there's, I put, I put between two and three inches of water in the bottom of the canner when I start, you know, and that's like a lot of water. It's a little extra just yeah. because I want that extra safety barrier. But yeah. I mean, yeah, when you're boiling it, it's, it's steaming through the jiggler. I mean, it, it takes a while to boil water off, you know, and I had, it was at least a half an hour that, the, that, that my, my timer had expired and it was, it was blowing steam out of the jiggler, like nobody's business, but everything was fine. It was noisy. It was really, really loud and it, it was scary, but 
it was good. Yeah, nothing yeah. blew up. I guess that's a good thing, like, because I have back issues. Everybody knows I have back issues. So it, it's really hard for me to stand for a long time. And those, some of those canning sessions are really long. So oh, yeah. it really helps me. Like, I do all the canning stuff. You know, I do the process and put everything in the jars and put the canner on and stuff. And then thankfully Barrett will, you know, help me with the end process so I can go lay down in the middle of it and come back and right. whatever. So it like, helps me. Like I'm lucky. Like uh, this house that I just bought in November, um, my stove is awesome. It's a glass top. I can on a glass top. And I mean, it's completely safe as long as you don't like slide the canner on the glass. Right. Pick it up, put it down. Uh, but, um, like, this stove is on steroids. Like, I put it on high, I get it up to temperature, it hits pressure, and within within 20 minutes, I'm down to um, somewhere between low and one, and I'm stable throughout the, the, the rest of the entire canning process. It's, it's, like, so easy with the stove. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Like the one I had before at my old house, you know, I had to constantly be turning the temperature down, keeping it right. But this one, like with the glass top and it's got like this massive burner. I mean, for some reason, it's just like within 20 minutes, I've got it dialed down to one and it's like stable. It, it just holds about 11 PSI the entire time. It's, it's like awesome. Um, do you, does your canner have a gauge on it as well? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's all American. I've got the gauge and the jiggler. And my gauge is obviously um it's not accurate. I mean it's 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 not calibrated, but I've been using it so long I know you know what I mean. It's like my jiggler doesn't start jiggling until my pressure gauge or my dial gauge is somewhere right around eleven PSI and I keep it between eleven and twelve. You know, yeah. as long as my jiggler's going you know, three to five times a minute, I'm happy. And it's, it stays above 10 PSI, so it's it's good from there. I was just curious because the canner I have, obviously, is really old, and it works just fine, but I don't have a gauge, and I've never used a gauge on my pressure canner ever. Yeah, I mean, I just, it's just like this thing that you look at, you know, but you don't need a gauge. All you need is a weighted uh, you know, a jiggler or a way to gauge. It tells you everything you need to know about how fast it's jiggling and, you know, how often, you know? Yeah. I mean, I got the All American because of Gilbert Farms, and that's what she used. And I'm like, I love her videos. I'm going to get the exact same thing so I can follow her instructions step by step. And, and it was just like, uh, you know, I fell in love with it. It's awesome. Yeah, one of these days I might, I don't know, I always think I would like to have an All-American, but then you have all those, what do you call it, the bolts or whatever you got to turn down. I'm like, I don't know, on my pressure, have you ever seen those, the big ones? The big yeah. American? The one I got, I've got, the, I've got the, 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 the toggle locks, there's six of them. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I'm talking about. Well, on my pressure canner, all I have to do is put the lid down and turn, and it's ready to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I've never used anything but the All American. I just yeah. love it because there's there's no moving parts that I have to. Uh, I don't have a gasket. It's a metal on metal seal. Oh, okay. I, mean, I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah, that's why I went for the All American. There, I don't have to. I, there's no maintenance other than you know cleaning it. It's a metal on metal seal. You just lube the uh, the edge where it touches with uh, uh, cooking oil. It can be olive oil or you know any kind of oil, just to yeah. make sure the metal doesn't like stick. But uh, yeah, there's no gasket, nothing. It's a metal on metal seal. That's why those toggles. That's why you have six of them. It, it like okay. it's like legit. It looks like uh, being in a submarine and they're loading a torpedo in the tube and they're cranking down all these things. It's like 
it's yeah. crazy but it's like a half inch thick solid aluminum so i mean it's it's like it's heavy it's 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 like made to go to combat you know yeah and that's another thing about it i don't think i'd be able to pick an all-american up by myself <laughs> it's heavy i ain't gonna lie it's a, yeah it's got some weight to it mm -hmm. but they are really really nice yeah, they're they're hardcore, man. They're they're like built to last forever. Like the only thing that's probably ever going to go out on it is probably the dial gauge, but you can function without it. And maybe the uh, the toggles that you twist, but but because they are hard plastic, they may get old and deteriorate. But I mean, they're it's rock solid. I love it. I love it. I honestly, I wish I would have gotten a bigger one. You know, I mean, because I can only do seven seven quarts at a time, or um, sixteen pints. Um, I wish I, I would have gotten a bigger one where I could do fourteen quarts at a time and a crap load of pints, but uh, I didn't. I plan on upgrading one day, but you know, not yet. Now, what are you making? I'm making whipped cream. Ah. So I just put heavy whipping cream in this and some stevia. If you don't do stevia, you can just use sugar. Um, and you just put it in a blender and whip it and it turns into cream. If you blend it too long, you'll get butter. So you'll have your homemade butter. <laughs> nice. Super good. Yeah, Best Life is saying they have a super heavy price too. Yes, they do. We got a bunch yeah. of people that jumped in. Heritage Heart Homestead, hello and welcome. Ginger Ninja. Um, I thought somebody else, too. Ginger. Milkmaid. Milkmaid, hello. Hey, Milkmaid. Yeah, um, that's, like, awesome, actually. Yeah, the, the price has actually increased quite a bit. Um, I got my, my All-American 921 uh, a couple years ago. It was barely over 200 bucks. Now, if you try to get one, you're going to spend 350 So it's increased like 80% in the last year. It's not because there's an aluminum shortage. It's the other thing. That's crazy. Yeah, I've kept my eyes on the All American for a long time on Amazon, and I just keep watching the price raise higher and higher and higher. Yeah, I looked at them tonight. They're like three hundred and fifty bucks. I paid a little over two hundred. I think that's I paid like two fifteen, maybe two twenty. Wow. But now it's like two fifty. Yeah, they're yeah, they're proud. They're proud of them. So I got my breakfast done. <laughs> yeah. And that's like I told everybody. I mean, you know, <clears throat> you can go to Walmart tomorrow and get a, 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 a Presto pressure canner for 80 bucks. $78, I believe it is. Can you but see the it? Thing about the All American, I mean, I spent the money. Oh, wow. wow that's beautiful. Are you serious? Wow. Uh, uh, my home picked uh, blueberries and some whipping cream on top. Wow. That looks good. Thank you. See, and you that's like very long. Huh? Do, Do I deliver? deliver? I wonder if they would hold up in the mail. <laughs> you think they'd hold up in the mail? It wouldn't I take wish. I don't think it would take too long to get to North Carolina. I can call DoorDash right now and place, an order. <laughs> and place an order right now. <laughs> TH2 is saying that All American is from 1986. Or their All American is from 1986. Oh. But they only paid like 100 bucks Jeez. back then. Yeah, yeah. The one I got, I paid a little over two hundred bucks, and right now they're going for like three fifty if you can find them, because most places are out of stock because everybody wants the can now, which is awesome. My 
dog is pacing. I guess it's because she smells the food. I thought she had to go out. But. Heritage Heart Homestead. I am in central southern North Carolina, right on the South Carolina border. I'm very close to Rockingham, if you know where that is. Hello, Ginger Ninja. Ninja Ninja. I'm guessing you're a redhead. I never said that before, but Ginger Ninja, I'm just going to go with that. <laughs> she has some really, she had a really cute video, um, or maybe it was pictures. I don't remember, but she had a piece of ginger doing ninja tricks. It was so funny. <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah, I was dying. <laughs> She had it like different pictures of it in the garden and all over the place. <laughs> all right. So Heritage Heart Homestead, are you saying you're, you like live, are you my neighbor? You live close to Rockingham, like for real? That would be awesome. Yeah. There's a lot of awesome people in North Carolina that I know from YouTube. I'm like, Man, why don't I live in North Carolina? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of people in the community that are close to me. I mean, I live, I live, you know, within an hour of uh, native, native and devout. Yeah, I live about an hour from him. Um, uh, Prepping Plumber and Mrs. Prepping Plumber, they're about an hour away. Oh, are they there? I didn't know they were there too. Yeah, they're 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 uh, more west of me. They're closer to Charlotte. I have a moth attacking me. Oh. I'm in Cleveland County. I don't know where that's at. Is that close to Rockingham? I'm in Richmond County. Is that close to Rockingham? I guess. Well, I can't look on my phone because I'm doing this on my phone. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ginger Ninja says yes I have strawberry or auburn hair my red highlights always come through nice well heart heritage heart homestead if you're like legit close to me close to Rockingham I mean shoot me an email because I would love to like get to know people close to me and Five miles from I-85. So you're you're like really close to Prepping Plumber then. Yeah, because he's close to Charlotte. So if you're close to I-85, yeah, you're close to uh, Prepping Plumber. You're probably about an hour from me. Maybe a little more. That's exciting. I love yeah. finding people that are close to me. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and Native and Devout, he like dr literally drives within five miles of my house three times a week. On his wow. job. Yeah. And you guys haven't met up yet? Um, he's going to come up here in a couple of months to pick up his rabbits because I'm uh, uh, Zani won my 1000 subscriber giveaway and she donated her rabbits to um, Native. So I'm going to give him a uh, breeding pair of meat rabbits. Awesome. I have a um, subscriber. Um, that lives in the same town as me. She's only like 10 minutes away from my house. And I was like, that's so cool. So when we found that out, I went over and met her and hung out. Oh, sweet. Yeah. I, I'm waiting on that to happen. I'm waiting on somebody to say, Oh, I live like here. And I'm like, Holy sh you're like two miles from me. I'll be right over. You yeah. Know? That's pretty much what happened to us. I'm like, I'm coming. I'll be there. <laughs> Milkmaid, your sister lives outside of Fayetteville. I'm like quite close to Fayetteville. Charlotte is 45 minutes north of her, she says. Okay. Yes, Ginger Ninja. I'm so jealous. Ginger Ninja got to meet Sarah from the Big Blue House Homestead and Tony and Chris from the Yellow House on the Hill. I was jealous of that. <laughs> Sarah from the Big Blue House Homestead. I just love her. She is so knowledgeable when it comes to plants and growing. Any gardening question you ever need to know, you Hit her up. She'll tell you. <laughs> cool. Lady Hammer, welcome back. Hello, Lady Hammer. Yes, we're still on TV. 
I, I actually have not stopped being on TV since, uh, well, yesterday. Ginger Ninja says garden gurus are all going to meet next month in North Carolina. I'm near Charlotte too, ghost. Ah! Wow. Where are they going to meet at? Shoot me an email. Ghost prepper one, three, six, nine at Gmail. I would love to, 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 to find out if that's close enough for me to make that trip. Bye. The best life. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye. I got a tour of Sarah's greenhouse and all her garden stuff. Ah, you suck. No, I'm joking. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I'm supposed to be going to Sarah's. Might see if I can visit her tomorrow. You guys, so not fair. <laughs> One of these days, if I get to go to a meetup, I'm going to be like, look at this person. Look at this person. No. <laughs> All right. <laughs> ha ha ghost can't stay off the TV. <laughs> I tried. I tried. The keto's like, hey, I'm making heart shaped waffles and you gotta watch. And I'm like, all right, I got nothing better to do. Let let me watch you make some waffles. Like I broke your arm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I watch you make waffles with whipped cream and you don't even share. <laughs> well, I guess it's a good thing we don't have smell of vision because it'd be real torture. Oh, absolutely. I would unsub like right now. <laughs> You're getting the thumbs down like real quick. <laughs> if you invent smell of vision, I, I yeah, mm -mm. I don't even want to smell that. Um, trust in God says I got to go get more almond flour this morning. <sighs> I'm trying to help trust in God stay accountable, ghost. He went keto. What? Nice. Mm -hmm. Prepper Tribe is still keto, isn't he? As far as I know. Yeah. Yeah, as far as I know. He he hadn't brought it up, you know, the last couple of times I talked to him. But, I yeah. mean, he, looks, he still looks like the weight's staying off, so I'm, I'm assuming that he is. I think it's pretty cool, all these uh preppers are getting in on the keto thing native is as keto as well he's more carnivore but yeah he's kind of like me i'm i'm all about the beat <laughs> the milkmaid says ha ha tried and failed i want some waffles super bad now <laughs> yeah go back and watch she made cute little heart shaped waffles they're like waffle make nuggets <laughs> I checked to see how far prior Oklahoma is, and it's 15 plus hours. I couldn't do it. Oh, yeah. They had a meet up to the homesteaders in Oklahoma. That's way too far for me. Yeah, they're starting to have quite a few meetups all over the country, like uh, Sawyer Ridge Homestead. They, uh, they had a meetup. They've actually had a couple of meetups in the last probably six months or so. And yeah. They had an awesome turnout. See, I yeah. love Holy Ridge Farms. That, that's an awesome channel. Those those guys are so awesome. That's the one bad thing about having a homestead and animals, or at least large animals. It's so hard to get away, especially yeah. you know if it's a state away. Yeah, it's that's like me. All I have is rabbits. But if I leave for a day, I mean, who's going to watch my rabbits? You right. Know what I mean? My biggest fear is, you know, I have three huge hogs and one feeder hog. So my big hogs, they're like 650 pounds, maybe 700 pounds. If I leave and they get out and I'm a state or two states away, what am I going to do? Like, yeah. I'm liable for anything that happens with those hogs. If they get on the road and somebody hits them, I'm liable. If they go into somebody's garden and destroys it, I'm liable. Yep. Y'all need to come to Homesteaders of America up in Virginia in October. Then I can meet you all. Yeah. <laughs> I need to find a hog sitter. <laughs> I 
from Gemma. I'm so happy I got to know Jess. She is my YouTube sister. Yes, you are. Five chihuahuas. That's a lot of rats. <laughs> I love chihuahuas. I've always had chihuahuas. Chihuahuas are awesome. <laughs> really? Uh, You're a chihuahua guy? I grew up. I always had a chihuahua until... I don't know, a few years ago. Um, uh, actually, three years ago, my chihuahua died. Uh, our pet chihuahua, he, he passed away. But now I just have my surface dog in my lab. But, I mean, I grew up with a chihuahua in the house. That's like the best guard dog or the best alarm clock ever. I just, I don't picture you as a chihuahua guy. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't my choice. I grew up with chihuahuas. They were just in the house. I mean, now I have a 100-pound lab. I have a husky, and I have a great Pyrenees. Great Pyrenees. Huge dog. He kills me. He like He's so funny because he'll put his, his mouth in my... He'll put his mouth around my arm and try to lead me around the yard. Oh, yeah. He, he's, like, really gentle, but I can't see if I can get it on screen. I don't know. You see that bruise? There's bruises. Yeah, yeah the big green ones. Yeah. yeah. He, he takes my arm in his mouth and tries to lead me around the yard. Like, <laughs> showing you stuff. He's showing I, you his job. I know. I'm like, dude, you're killing my arm. Stop. And if I don't, like go where he wants me to you know how dogs put something in their mouth and they shake their head yeah that's what he does to my arm and he never breaks the skin or anything he's gentle about it but i bruise and i'm like people are gonna think i'm getting beat up <laughs> hey howie how you doing food forest permaculture is in the house have you met um howie ghost no, I have not. You have to check him out too. Howie's awesome channel. He does food forest. Um, so he wow. has this huge, massive food forest, and he's over at um uh now I'm gonna forget now that I wanna tell you. He's on an island over in Canada, Vancouver Island. Oh wow. And he can actually what blew me away from ha uh, blew me away about Howie the first time I watched him he was on this island in Canada and he grew citrus fruit tropical fruit and I'm like what you can't grow that in Canada and then I started talking to him and it's actually a tropical island in Canada nice isn't that awesome yeah I'm definitely gonna have to check that out to Tart Homes says, says they have a great Pyrenees too. The milk made Pyrenees are awesome. Thank you, Howie. He's wishing me the best. So, well, you guys, I think I'm going to go ahead and end this live stream. I'm going to let Ghost go take his nap and get rested yeah. up for his live stream. And, I got to get this kitchen cleaned and sanitized before that live stream as well. So I just want to thank everybody for coming in and hanging out with us. Thank you guys for coming on the panel and hanging out with me. Absolutely. Anytime. And I hope you all stay happy, healthy, and safe. And we'll catch you next time. Thanks for coming in. Bye, everybody.